Okay. We're live. I believe we are live. Yes, I'm super excited this afternoon to be with, uh, as I put, the Weston Lunsford of Dental uh -huh. Intel. One of the most magical pieces of software dashboards that I've ever seen. As I said before, the first time I saw it, I had two thoughts. One is, why didn't I make that? And two was, oh my goodness, if all of these dental offices find out about this, no one will need to hire me because it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, Penny, but thank uh, you. Uh, well, data can only take you so far. We well, no, this is true. This is true. And and that really leads, I appreciate you joining me today. You're you're rocking your Unleash the Magic of Culture t-shirt, yeah. so am I. We, yes. won't have, we won't ask for people to say who looks better in their shirt. Don't, don't even go there, folks, right? Uh, but thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, we are going to have a little chat about culture. And uh, Dental Intel is one of our sponsors for our Unleash the Magic of Culture Leadership Retreat at Walt Disney World, May 3rd and 4th. It is, we will be here in just a matter, less than 100 days. I can hardly believe it's here. And uh, so I, we want to talk about culture. And I really want to talk about the culture of Dental Intel a bit. Um, going a little bit off script here, but Weston, everyone that I meet that works with Dental Intel and had an awesome time, learned a ton at the Coaching Mastery Summit, it's like you guys either A, somehow scream for happy people, or B, you're pumping something in the water fountains there. Uh, so I, you know, I'd love to hear about what you, know, what you think is important on the inside part of, yeah. of Dental Intel, and then also how you how you see culture in the dental practice being important. Well, first of all, thanks for even recognizing that. I, I appreciate it. We, we at Dental Intel um, work extremely hard at, uh, with our culture. And you know, you hear this word, and I think the very first time I heard this word, like all workplaces, all, all organizations talk about this mysterious word of culture. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I don't even know if we know how to really define what that is. But I know that when, when employers or team leaders or individuals interview individuals, one of the first questions in our company I, I always ask if they're going to be hiring someone is, are, is, that, is that individual a good cultural fit? Mm -hmm. um, I think that here at Dental Intel, we've defined for us what that really means. But it's critical that every company really defines what a good cultural fit means. And the reality is when you interview someone, and you're sitting down, in fact, my most recent hire that I actually hired, and I haven't hired someone myself personally in a long time, mm -hmm. um, but I did just hire an executive assistant. And I was interviewing several people and had gone through several different prospects. And then Bailey came in and she sat down. And within the first two minutes, I, in my mind, I was just like, this, this is her. This is who yeah. we need. Um, all the other candidates were awesome. And they had such great organizational skills. Um, they had awesome experiences, but at the same time, I didn't feel that feeling that I knew she would just mold and blend with the entire team that we have and the fun atmosphere that we try to create here at Dental Intel. But I would have to say, Penny, and I think you'd probably agree with this, and I love that you're doing this at Disney, and I'm hoping we get to talk a little bit about Disney. Um, but culture to me and how your team feels when they walk into your workplace is by far the number one most important thing any business can tackle. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more important, and a lot of people will say that's not true, it's my patients. That is not true. Your human capital and how they feel when they walk in your environment and how they feel when they're interacting with your patients and how they feel when they're interacting with their family after work and what they're saying to their spouses about work when they leave is so impactful on productivity and the outcomes that your patients and that my, my customers will experience. And if it's not good, what ends up happening is they go home and they complain to their spouse and they had a really hard day at work. Mm -hmm. And then a spouse starts talking about, well, maybe you should start looking for another job or look for something different, or you don't need to work as many hours as you're working versus that spouse coming home and hearing work was awesome, right? right. And if they hear that, they come home happy. I do what's called post hire interviews. And I do this after two weeks. Um, so if someone's with us for two weeks, I'll do an interview with that, that new team member. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask them what's going on. And, and one of the most common things that I hear here at Dental Intel 
is that their spouses have commented how happy they've been since they've been going home. I love they it. They say the same thing. I'm so happy. I love coming in. Um, so it's important to us. We love it. We focus on it. It's something that we're always trying to create this incredible environment for our team members so that they feel good the moment they walk in and they feel better when they leave than they did before they walked in. That's important to us in all, all cases here at Dental Intel. Well, and I think it, and, and you, you did a tremendous job of weaving that in with the dental practice. If one of the best things that you can do marketing wise in the dental office is have team members that at least sound like they're happy to be there when they answer the phone. You know, yes. we, get, we get caught up, you know, and we teach scripting and scripting, it's, it's important, but it can't replace whether or not whoever it is that you're talking to thinks, wow, this person, they sound yeah, really that. approachable. They, yeah. they sound like they want to be there instead of they're counting the hours to get out of there. So, um, but I love, uh, obviously, you know, I love the, the culture of Disney and I love that you want to talk about it. When, when I think about Disney and the fact that, yes, I would say their rides are better, right, than, than like a Six Flags. They're really good. Yeah, they're, they're, they definitely are. Uh, but the real difference uh, about that, again, is how, how you feel when you're there. Yep. And, it's and more I think, than the rides, for sure. Absolutely, right? And, and they, of course, take it just, you know, to the nth degree, the, you know, the smells, the sounds. Um, my husband and I were at the other end of, of the United States at Disneyland for a conference back in June, and we were at Downtown Disney, and as we walked along, when we went from the Downtown Disney area to where you approached the park entrance, mm -hmm. the music changed, the lighting changed, you could really feel it, and so yeah. it, it's that whole environment piece. And, and I'm going to jump back. I'll, I'll jump back and forth from Dental Intel to Disney, if that's okay. Yeah, that's awesome. It'll just keep it interesting. <laughs> um, when, when I think about Dental Intel and how amazing the dashboard is, it, but it's more, than, it's more than data, right? What, what sets you guys apart from other dashboards is the level of accountability that team members can have as, as far as engaging what is it that we're actually taking action on. But at the end of the day, and, and I think you would agree, um, it's dentistry continues to accelerate, uh, not only the clinical part, but the business of dentistry. We have new systems. You know, you guys are always rolling out, oh, hey, now you can use patient finder, right? But it requires a human, right? Even though the dashboard's awesome, it requires the people to make that part work. And, yeah. and I think having a culture where, Yes, measuring data is important, but all, so is action, and so is uh, you know being willing to you know to get in there and and take that action. So, um, you know, I'm just some kind of curious what your thoughts are just around the whole technology piece change and how we can continue to nurture and foster that culture that has you know people adapting to that because Disney. Hey, I first went when I was in the sixth grade. Um, Thankfully, I will not, I don't even know where that picture is. It was not pretty, um, but Disney World's changed a ton since then, yeah. right? And, I, and I'm sure it wasn't easy. So, um, you know, just kind of love to hear your thoughts around, you know, getting, getting our teams to mold and meld with what we need to do uh, to accomplish better things. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for even asking that question. First of all, I have to say I love Disney. We go there as a family three to four times a year, and that's probably excessive, but that's how often we bounce back and forth between Disney World and Disneyland. I do have to say Disney World is so big, it's incredible, but I love Disneyland. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, Disneyland definitely, and I've only really been there one time, uh, and, and it was really, really cool. It, it, yeah. was, it was a little bit easier to navigate Disney World. Again, it, it has my it's heart. I've been there. There's a lot more to do, but it's yes. big. It's big. But one of the things that I noticed at Disney, is Disneyland and, and Disney World, both of them, is it's not, like you mentioned, it is not just the, and I've asked a lot of the team members or the cast members is what they call them at Disneyland and Disney World because I'm always fascinated by exceptional customer service. In fact, when I go to Disneyland, I usually will spend more of my time because rides now make me sick. I don't know if you've gotten to that point or not. My kids love them, but I can't get on them anymore because I, I just get too sick. So I'll, I'll spend a lot of my time as I'm standing there waiting for my children to get off the ride watching team members. 
the cast members and watching their experiences that they're trying to create for people. And I'll even go up and ask these team members, hey, you did this, why did you do that? And in er almost all of them will say the words, my number one job here is to create magical opportunities and moments for the people that are in the park. Mm -hmm. We want them having a magical experience. And they use this word magical, they use it all the time. And uh, I've loved that. And I, I've learned a lot from Disney in regards to the atmosphere that you need to create in your office. Because the reality, when, when the leadership of Disney says, we need to be doing this for this reason, everyone immediately is on board because they all know the ultimate vision is to create this magical moment. And so when leadership comes in and says, we've got to make sure that the garbage can stay 25% full, like don't empty them all the way, they need to stay 25% full. And there's reasons behind that. Um, that everyone, be, because it'll keep the environment cleaner here, people will, will respond and they have all their reasons, the why behind it, but everyone immediately molds to that and they all adopt it immediately. So when they're making changes, because they have this ultimate vision, this ultimate goal of this experience, which is to create magical moments for the, for the, the customers that come into their park, um, everyone adapts to changes pretty quickly. It doesn't take them very long. So when I think about dental intel in dental practices and data, and I think that you can agree that data can be used in a right way or in a wrong way, right? It's a, it can either be a tool or a weapon, it right? Really <laughs> We've seen it used both ways and it really hurts. Like I get, I'm not kidding, right here, just right underneath my rib cage, when I see doctors using it the wrong way or even office managers use it the wrong way with their teams, I have a pain right here in my stomach. Sure. It hurts. Nothing upsets me worse than that. When I see someone using what we built that was supposed to help and inspire and engage and promote collaboration, really kind of do the opposite. And so what I would say first to really create a healthy data-driven culture is what mm -hmm. I'd like to call it, or a magical, let's use the word magical data-driven culture. And, and it is magical, you guys, because if you can do it right, if you can do it right, you're going to have an entire team molding around statistics and trying to solve problems to create this magical experience for your patients, which if that happens, patient care improves. If we're improving patient care and doing more and better dentistry, we're doing higher end dentistry, then production is gonna go up. If production is going up, profits are gonna go up. If profits are going up, team members are gonna be rewarded more. So if we can get everyone around that looking at statistics in a collaborative way and a, and a healthy manner, then everyone's gonna win. I promise you, patients and to practice. And I wanna give you an example of a doctor. I just, I was at Seattle Study Club Symposium this last week in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. By the way, I didn't know Florida could be cold. Oh, you, was it cold? I was having some FOMO, you know, like the, the whole fear of missing out about not being there. Are you? Hell. Yes, yes, I wanna hear all about it. It was great, but I had a doctor, Dr. Uh, Th Maxwell Thaney, run from one side of, not run, he walked from, he was very respectful and, and, and reserved, but he walked from one side of the room to the other side of the room because we locked eyes and we knew each other. And he had been using our, our dental intel for a while and introducing mm -hmm. data in his practice. And like many people, he had a struggle at first. I mean, it was a struggle. And uh, getting his team to really want to be that vulnerable to see what's working and not working because we all walk into practice wanting to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. No one wakes up thinking, I'm just gonna give 50% today, no one does. And so when they see that they're at 50% of a standard or a benchmark, it doesn't feel great. But he figured out a way to really invite a healthy culture around this. And he, he was so excited to show me his phone and pictures that he took of metrics in his office. So he uses dental intel, every team member in their own certain aspects of metrics, like they're the owner of that metric. But that just means that they're responsible to talk about it. It doesn't mean they're responsible for making sure it increases. They're part of it. They're the chair of that metric. They are the chairman, but it's a whole collaborative team. So what they did is they had this board where they have the names of the metrics and it's called heroes, civilians, and villains. And every single week they're moving the names of these metrics either to heroes, civilians, or villains. But the entire team is looking at it saying, well, what if we did this to try to get this metric moved up to the hero section? They have taken what we have built and mm -hmm. completely made it a healthy way to discover, to look. And their practice right now is doing better than it's ever done in its entire life. And I'm telling you, it's because he's got a team of 22 people 
that's sitting there looking at this data together in a healthy manner, collaborative manner, and they're all trying to get things to a hero mode, right? That whole- is so awesome. Well, they found a way to make it fun. Right. And, and a visual, I mean, even though it's already a visual, a visual way to do it. Uh, I think that's fantastic. And, and I love, I love that you guys do share those benchmarks. Sometimes I'm hesitant, hesitant to share them with offices because I believe that we, you know, our greatest competition is within, it's within the four walls of our business, right? Disney world's true greatest competition, especially now that they've raised the bar so high or Disneyland or or the Disney resorts is themselves, right? We now have this expectation. So even though we may not be, um, you know, as a dental office, it, we might not be in the top 10%. Are we, are, are we gaining I'm some momentum? Are we, are we doing the activities to help us do that? And even if we don't get the result yet, it's like, wow, you know what? We, we, we did make three calls, right? Or, or we did track, you know, two weeks ago, we weren't tracking anything in the case acceptance. Uh, now we're tracking, we're seeing now we are. Yeah. Now Sometimes, we are. Benny, you, you're so right when you, when you say that. And, and I love that you picked up on this and looking at some of this data and using data and practices because oftentimes everyone's so focused on the outcome. Mm-hmm. We all want this outcome. And the reality is sometimes outcomes are not going to be where we want them to be. But if we can use the information and the data to look at the journey, like where mm-hmm. we were and where we are now, our, how's the journey moving? Sure, we may have a goal to have a million dollars production per month and have this $12 million practice. And I do know some doctors that want that. That's their goal. But the question is, if we keep, or the problem is, if they keep focusing on that outcome and they're so far away from that number, they're never going to be happy. And Mm -hmm. we've got to look at our numbers in a way of saying, where are we today? Where can we be tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And here's the great thing. If you're not in the top 10 percentile, you should be celebrating that as a practice. Here's why. Because you have room to improve. How dreadful and dreary would it be if, if, if what you have right now is as good as it's going to get? Right. It is what it is. It's yeah, there's always a positive. It's, it's easier to, to make that next step. Yeah, even if you're in 40 percentile of where you should be at, that's great because that just means there's a lot of room for your team to feel excitement about the improvement that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's how you make it healthy. You don't ever talk about how bad it is. You talk about the opportunities. So we have a rule at Dental Intel, and we try to implement this when we teach our practices how to use data in our dashboard. But the rule is always three celebrations, three of them. Find three things that are good about yesterday's performance before talking about one helpful observation. And if you are going to bring in a second one, then you still need to bring in another three. Yeah. Three wow. One. I love that. So it's not even a one-to-one ratio. It's a three-to-one. You've even turned that into a metric. I love it. I love <laughs> well, it. Well, you know as well as I do, one bad outweighs probably 10 goods. I mean, it does for me. When I hear one bad thing that happens, it weighs on you and it weighs on everyone. And so it's important that we don't even talk about it being bad. We need to view it as an opportunity. So mm-hmm. it's not even, the number's not bad. If our hygiene reappointment percentage is sitting at 67%, and we know we want it above 85 to 90 percent, 67 is not bad. What right. is the great opportunity? Well, right? absolutely. And, and I love what you said about outcomes also, because when you're strictly looking at an outcome, that's more of a, and I think back to sports, so, you know, so I used to play a ton of sports back in the day. It's a win-lose, right? right? And it's not people-focused. If, if we're focusing on the progress and are we doing the activities, it not only rewards people for making those attempts, right? I mean, we take a risk when we call a patient that hasn't been in, right? We take a risk when we approach a patient a different way than we have about treatment that they haven't been booking. And so we're rewarding the positive behavior and they're more open and receptive to, you know, make the shift or the change to get a different result. And the magical thing about that is you're going to get more wins by doing that. You're going to get more wins by rewarding that than rewarding an outcome. I agree. I agree. The whole outcome thing, you know, again, it may get you a short, you know, if it's all based on outcome, short term, people may scramble a little bit. They don't want to engage with you. Yeah. Um, So I love what you said about magical dental teams. And and we have a Facebook group uh, by that name, which I'll be sharing this with later. But exactly the magic happens and reconnecting that back to Disney. 
those cast members are making that experience happen, but you're not aware that they're making it happen. But they love so, doing it. Yeah, they, they love doing love it. love doing it. And so that's the whole, you know, magical dental teams, because somebody was like, oh, you know, everybody's running around with pixie dust flying off of them. It's like, no, if it's really working, it's, you feel it. It's not like they're acting magical. Right. It's, it's the experience that you're having. And um, one thing that I wanted to mention, and again, I'm, I'm so glad that you love Disney. And I do, I, I do hope, fingers crossed, that uh, potentially maybe even you yourself might be uh, one, of the, one of your team members that, that comes to the event in May. But what, what really inspired me, uh, because I feel the same way you do a lot of the time when I go, and I do still ride some of the rides, although Rock and Roller Coaster and I, I think, are about to have to part company. I think it's just my brain's too old to get shaken like that. One. No, it's, it's a rough one. Fun. It's fun. But it's my um, favorite. It is my oldest son's favorite ride. Oh, oh. But I, I've been to a couple of the Disney Institute courses. And every time, the first one I went to was probably about 10 years ago. And the last one was three years ago. And I sit there, which I'm just soaking it in and loving it, right? But as a participant, but all I can think of is, oh, you know, I wish there was a way you know, to bring this, this aspect of it to dentistry. So while we won't be incorporating an actual Disney Institute course, we have arranged for a behind the scenes tour, which I've also done one of those as an individual. That's awesome, by the way. This one is the, oh, I'm so excited. This one is the business behind the magic and it will be solely for our, you know, for our group. And they take, uh, take you not only in certain but behind the scenes areas in the parks, um, it was funny you mentioned the, the the trash cans. One of the areas that we'll be going to, and at first when they mentioned it, I thought, well, this is a little odd. Um, it's their laundry facility. Yeah. And Walt Disney World Resort in Florida has, at least at the time that this uh, brochure was put together, the fourth largest laundry facility in the world. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've about heard it. about this, and you're going to love the experience. They, oh. they even make... The business side of laundry magical. They really absolutely, and the business side of team members picking up or cast members picking up their yeah. costumes um, as well. So, uh, but anyway, I'm super excited about it. Um, if if you were to, because I know um, it's always fun to tune into Facebook Lives, but I have just about as short of attention span as anybody. Uh -huh. um, any any favorite memory and which you've already shared one uh thing about being at the parks uh either a favorite memory favorite disney character favorite i do have a favorite memory and i do have a favorite disney character too so awesome. and, and they're both related together so you're Good. ready for this? even better okay my favorite character is mickey mouse hands down and i know that may sound cliche but i i'm one of those guys that literally when you watch um the magic show or not the magic show imagination or shoot why can't I think of the show at the end of the night with the fireworks? Oh, the fireworks? Yes. Well, they, do, they do change the name of it, um, you know, from time know. to time. I'm having one of those moments, though. It's our favorite thing to watch. I can't, so I can't believe that. When we watch the Phantasmic show. The Fantastic. Fantastic show. And uh, I get emotional when, when he comes out triumphing over this big old green dragon. So I love, I love Mickey Mouse. He's incredible. But when I uh, was a younger parent, um, my oldest son at this time was six years old and my daughter was uh, three turning four. She might have been right around four years old. Mm -hmm. And I've learned, by the way, kids get lost in Disneyland a lot. <laughs> you would think you probably people are probably thinking I'm irresponsible now, but we lost our daughter. Oh. Um, we, were, we were riding. Uh, this was in Disneyland and we were riding uh, the um, Winnie the Pooh ride, mm -hmm. which is an easy ride, but it's there next to Splash Mountain. And um, we were getting off the ride and we thought we had both kids with us. And then all of a sudden we look and I, I have Gavin with me and I'm like, where's Addison? And Kirsten said, I thought you had Addison and oh. neither one of us had Addison. And there was, it was so full. I mean, the park was full. So we walked back as quick as we could, could not find Addison anywhere. Um, and she wasn't anywhere. And I was starting to panic. So I was walking around all the rides. Finally, um, it wasn't even me that asked for help, a Disney cast member recognized that I was a little bit distraught and yeah. uh, came up to me and said, what's going on? And I said, I can't find my daughter. Um, and I'm, I'm really worried about her right now. She's probably hysterical. Like, mm -hmm. cause Addison, she's a very clingy girl at that time and, and needed her parents. And so I was worried and he said, okay, hold on just a second. 
And so he got on his radio and started asking. He says, we think we know where your daughter's at and uh, follow me. And we walk and they already had her all the way from the Winnie the Pooh ride all the way up at the front, which was crazy how fast they had it. But she wasn't alone. She was sitting there with Mickey Mouse. And, oh. and th this was incredible because I walked up and still today, this is one of my daughter's most exciting moments in that park is back when she, and she's, She's 13 now. So this okay, the hair is standing up on my arms. Not that anybody uh, could see he it. He was just laughing and having the best time. And Mickey doesn't talk. He wasn't talking to her. He was silent the whole time and was just doing facial actions and stuff. He does. And there are times where he will talk. But he wasn't talking during this. And But she was having the best time with him. And I, I just remember that. And I fell in love, not just with Disneyland, but with the team members at Disneyland. Yeah. So that's why I think we as a family, we're there three to four times a year we love it oh that's amazing it makes me want to clap i love that story that's awesome um well thank you again so much for your time today for for being a believer in culture and uh, for being a sponsoring partner for our event and i will uh when we wrap up i will put the link uh, in the comments but if you want to find out more it's magicaldentalretreats.com Again, coming up May 3rd and 4th. If you're a Star Wars fan, yes, you will be there on May the 4th to be with you day. Oh, awesome. uh, it could make all of your galactic dreams come true, potentially. So, <laughs> um, But again, thank you, Weston, for just being an, an amazing friend and, and just, hey, for, for helping give birth to this dashboard because it, it definitely, at least for me as a coach, has changed the way that I've been able to look at a lot of those metrics and getting the team involved. Well, thank you for your support. And thank you for tacking, tackling culture. It's so needed in dental practices. And I'm, I'm really excited to see the outcomes of practices that work with you through this process. I, I know that's going to be a huge win for them and their teams and their well, patients. Thank you. Thank so. you so much. All right. Well, I appreciate you. And like I said, it's, it's been a ball. Thanks for making the time to join me. Thank you. We'll see you. Okay. Bye-bye.